All right. Welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today, man? Nathan, I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. And I'm kind of excited about what you got lined up for today. Oh, yeah, you should be. It's super exciting. Listen, everybody, get ready for a master class in creating eight figure sales letters from a copywriter who has done it and is still doing it over and over and over again. I'm really excited that today we have Mike Pavlish on the show. He has written over 100 promotions for health supplements that have usually brought in between 10 and $20 million a piece. And he's done this for some of the most successful supplement companies in the world, including Agora, Dr. Al Sears, Healthy Directions, and many, many others. Mike has also written for smaller entrepreneurs who sell supplements online. All told, get ready for this, all told, Mike's sales letters and VSLs have sold more than half a billion dollars worth of supplements. Half a billion. It's not often we get someone at this level of accomplishment on the podcast. Today, Mike is going to share with us how he does what he does in considerable, incredibly valuable detail. That is how to develop and write supplement promotions right from square one, promotions that bring in 10 million or more. And here is how to listen to copywriters podcast. Just remember that copy is powerful and you're responsible for how you use what you hear on this podcast. Most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims and or if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health and finance and business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. So Mike, welcome and thanks for being here. We've got so much to cover. Maybe you could start about what, you know, just the, the high points of what you do before writing. Uh, okay. There's a few things that both the writer should consider and a business owner should consider. Yeah, That's a great way to start. Yeah, if you wanna have a, a Grand Slam home run winner, you first have to have be in a good proven market niche. Um, I would say there's probably in the health supplement field that I specialize in, there's probably 10 different, uh, 10 different market niches that I like to write in because they're proven to work. I mean, over the last 30 years, there's a big demand for them. Weight loss, pain relief, uh, digestion problems, blood sugar, uh, blood sugar control, uh, on and on. Uh, a problem that a lot of people have is they think, okay, I'm going to come out with something that either doesn't have similar offers that are doing good in that niche, or I'm going to do, I'm going to come out with a niche, or I'm going to sell something that nobody's selling in that niche. And people have tried, you know, th hundreds of different niches, thousands of different niches, types of products. Usually if something's not selling, it's, not be, it's because there's not enough market demand. So if you stick to the tried and true markets, um, it really increases your chance of a big winner. Um, the second thing that's very important that a very small percent of businesses do is you need a, a, a supplement that has some unique ingredients in it that have good human clinical studies. Uh, I'll give you an example, David. Let's say we're selling a supplement to the people that have joint pain. Well, by the time people see our supplement online or in direct mail or whatnot, they bought all the bio freezes and Ben Gays and relief factors, and they've seen all kinds of uh, sales letters online and video sales letters for joint pain products. They've heard about and read about chondroitin, glucosamine, turmeric, unless we have a fresh supplement with some ingredients they have not seen about, seen before, heard about, why would they buy something they've already tried before or read about and said, oh, that doesn't work. I've read in forums, that doesn't work. I tried glucosamine, that doesn't work. Turmeric, oh, I tried that, that didn't do anything for me. Why, why would I try it again? Yet company after company comes out with a turmeric supplement for joint pain, right? glucosamine's in it. And you're, you're really handicapping yourself 
you're not going to probably have a big winner in that case unless there's certain ways around it. But do you see what I'm saying, Dave? Does that make sense? You have to have something yeah. fresh, new, and novel to yeah. break through and get people to try it. it it's, it's interesting because it's almost contradictory, but it's not when you really focus on what you're saying. And I want everyone to get this. You need to find a proven niche, so that's the same but you need to find something different within that proven niche that they haven't seen before. So that's different. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And, and for some people, that's like keeping two ideas that are contradictory in, in their head at the same time, but they're really not contradictory. It's like, you know, if, if someone's got joint pain, that's a proven niche. A lot of people have it. If, if you're just going to sell them another turmeric supplement, you're, you're screwed. We'll get into we'll get on we'll get into other things down the road that are very important, like the cap ready you choose, the upsells. You have to have upsells into place today because you have to get a high enough average order value on your front end sale to be able to scale and buy media today to have a front end winner. But we can get into all that later because I understand we want to dig into how to create a big front end winner now. So we'll get to that. Yeah. So one of the things that impresses me the most about you is, well, your writing is great, but that's not what impresses me most about. What impresses me most about you is, I think one of the things is your innovative research and the just dogged approach you take, not giving up, putting hours and hours just to come up with, with one big idea for example, could, could you talk about that? You've, you've got a eyesight one we talked about before the show that I, I think that'd be really interesting to people. Sure. Yeah. I think you need, in today's market, you need an edge. And to get that edge, you have to come up with a unique mechanism for your sales letter, your video sales letter, your ad, your econ page. What I mean by that is, it's not enough anymore in the competitive markets that we're talking about just to say, hey, this supplement will improve your eyesight. You'll see better, you'll feel younger, blah, 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 because it has these ingredients. You have to be able to come up with something, a new story, a new hook. And the way to do that and have science and studies behind that is to do product research, is to do research. I'll give you an example. And this took me, and I had a clock, I had a timer going on the research part of it. It was 14 hours and 26 minutes to find this hook, this research that I based the, the whole lead on. And yet it only made up five to 10% of the copy itself in quantity. But the hook was, and I'll just read it to you. Uh, what if I told you that staring at a red light for just three minutes a day can dramatically improve your declining eyesight? Well, I didn't believe it at first either, but it turns out it's true. At the world famous University College in London, England, Professor Glenn Jeffrey shocked the world when his research on 24 adults proved that staring at a deep red light for three minutes a day significantly improves declining eyesight. And all the study participants were over the age of 40. The reason why this red light improved vision so much was because he discovered that your eyes are like an iPhone camera. Your eyes and the camera on your iPhone both work great as long as you have enough battery power left for them to run on. As you know, your iPhone and the camera in it runs off a of battery. If the battery dies, your camera doesn't have any power and you can't see anything. Well, it's the same thing with your eyes. Your eyes have a power source like a battery. And if the power source to your eyes gets low, your vision gets weak, blurry, clouded, unfocused. You have trouble with night driving, blah, blah, blah. So then it gets into the study and how these nutrients recharge your eyes. Professor Jeffrey says it's like recharging a battery. And then we went into, then I went into research on how the nutri nutrients act like, uh, act on your eyes like it's recharging a battery. That, that's a, that's a really great hook. And I guess the sales letter did really well, did it not? It would be a big winner. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I just want to point out, thank you for that. That's that's a really great example. And I just want to point out, um, it really sounds simple when he says it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Battery, red light. But 14 hours and 26 minutes later, it's simple. It, you know, these things 
these things don't come out of inspiration like you know something on your shoulder just go hey psst, hey red light. no you, you have to actually work to get it so yeah, it's not it's not don draper's three martini lunch is it <laughs> it's not it's not <laughs> i mean on the other hand do you know how many times he rehearsed that three martini lunch before they turn on the camera so there's you know there's a story where right. wherever you go all, all right so um where do you do research? Where do you find this stuff? How do you do it? Well, there's two types of research I do. There's a standard research, which is uh, NC, NCBHI, the, you know, the PubMed stuff for clinical mm -hmm. human studies, Google search. I have a husband wife research team I use along with my own research. Uh, then I go into Reddit forums for the health problem I'm researching. That gets me a lot of the studies. Sometimes I find the, what you're looking for in research, David, in my opinion, and Bill Bonner from Agora has the same theory. Something that when you read it, like knocks your socks up, makes your head spin, like it's a shock to your system, like holy bleep bleep. This is interesting. You know, you're reading all the, your eyes go blurry, you're reading all these boring clinical studies. And of course you just gloss through them. You, you throw, you know, 99% of them, you might pick up tip, but something really will knock your socks off and it'll say, wow, this is interesting. This is cool. People love to hear this. You know, it's fresh, it's novel. Yeah, I mean- Because what, that's what people want. If you think of what are the first three words in news? What are the first three letters in news? New? And yeah, that's, I, what, that's why our heart, we're hardwired as humans to want to know what's new, what's novel, what's what's the breakthrough. Well, what I what I especially like about the hook you were telling us about is that for many people these days, their, their iPhone camera is their eyes. <laughs> they're, they're actually experiencing the world more through a screen and through their pictures than in, in real life. So there is a an, another level of verisimilitude in, in, in what you're doing. Let's talk about attention. For time immemorial, we've talked about getting someone's attention, but you say it's it's almost at a, a crisis point now. It, it's 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 just you, my words, not yours, but that it it's different than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we got about two seconds now to get someone's attention, or we're gone. We're dead. Wow. wow. Yeah. So. Um, that being said, probably one of the best ways, and we have to think like that when we write an ad, a sales letter, a video sales letter, that if we don't get their attention in those first two seconds, all, it doesn't matter how great the rest of the promotion is, it doesn't matter because they're not going to read it. Um, so there's different ways to do it. You know, there's a, the obvious way of uh, a great headline or great opening. Some of the ones I've used recently, this may be helpful to, to the listeners, the, the people watching this. Uh, and I wanna talk about curiosity and how important that is to openings and leads. But um, here are some story leads, which, which I use a lot. Uh, this is for a sleep supplement. It's got a picture of a, uh, an eight-year-old girl it starts out with, and she's crying, and she, uh, she's, she's reaching for her mom, and the grandpa's over in the side, a grandpa figure. He's over in the side, and he's, like, looking despondent, and the little girl cries out to her mom, Mommy, Grandpa almost shot me last night. Uh, 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 okay. So, so that's going to get attention. That's all it's meant to do. But and here's how the cell comes in. This is for a sleep supplement. Grandpa had his, his granddaughter over for a sleepover that night, right? Mm -hmm. They went to, they went out for ice cream and all that. So then grandpa couldn't sleep because he has insomnia. A little girl came down to the refrigerator or something. He heard a noise in the kitchen. He was confused because he couldn't sleep. He was half asleep. He grabbed his gun, went in the kitchen and almost shot, you know, pulled out his gun and almost shot his granddaughter. Wow. 
So that's a way to get attention, dramatic story. Another one for a pain relief or joint pain uh, product. Help, help, someone call 911. I think I broke my back. Another one for a skin cream. When my boyfriend bought me a Botox gift card for my birthday yesterday, I knew our relationship was over. Um, another one for a supplement. A doctor blows up a balloon on camera. This is the start of a VSL and he blows up a balloon and then he lets the air out and he says, this is how your dig digestion system works. I don't even want to tell you where my mind just went with that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, like a, a really shameless, outrageous one you told me about uh, for, for weight loss. with the Oh woman. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was, I think it goes like this. Um, I, in front at my birth at a birthday party with my family, friends and the man I desperately wanted to date, I sat down in a chair and bam, the chair collapsed because I was so overweight. And then it's a visual, actually a picture of a lady sitting on a patio with a chair that collapsed. And yeah, it's, it's very dramatic. And there's sounds and oohs and ahs and all this. And it's, you can call it, you know, what you want, but it gets attention to someone who wants to lose weight. People love dramatic, oh, uh, dramatic, this, personal, emotional. This, this is not, there. this is not the politically correct podcast in case you were wondering. So don't worry. <laughs> about that. You've been in this game for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I was starting out about 30 years ago. Um, if you, if you had a, if you had a headline with some mild curiosity and a strong benefit, that was, that was all you needed. These days you've got to be, well, certainly the market's more saturated. People have seen everything. People are, you know, more experienced and more cynical. We, we talk about it a lot there, you know, there are all kinds of people out there shooting theories, either it's something you have, or you're born with it or without it, or it can be learned. Um, I have not come to a firm conclusion because I've kind of seen it both ways. There's some people just can't do it. Uh, some people are born with it. Some people can learn it. That's, I guess that's a conclusion. What would you say about the importance of empathy, especially when you're going for a big winner, home grand slam, home run? Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my specialty and what I, what I'm known for, what I try to do is when I write a promotion is to, you know, have it sell 10 million, $20 million of a product. So it, in my experience, it's, it's crucial. And, you know, let me repeat crucial. They have what I call an empathy hand. And that stretches from the prospect to the product, to the order. And the empathy hand basically is this theory. Nobody cares about what you say until they believe that you care about them. And the more, the more they feel like the spokesperson talking in the sales letter, the video has been in their shoes and has suffered the emotional and physical problems that they have suffered from. And the more they can relate and, and feel the deep, the layers of feelings and problems that they've had, because the more they'll buy, the higher your conversions will be. Because people buy from people that they like, that they can relate to and that they trust. And all this deepens the psychological bonding that the prospect has with the spokesperson as you, as you use this empathy hand in your copywriting. And so um, like in that diet weight loss sales letter that has that shameful uh, opening to get attention, it's a true story. Yeah. And the lady then went on and after, you know, revealed her feelings, but then she bonded with the spokesperson, or excuse me, the spokesperson then bonded with the reader, the prospect and understood the feelings of a person being dramatically overweight and that's what make a big part of what makes it successful. Yeah, so empathy, yeah. I feel, is crucial. Yeah, um, you know that that reminds me, and um, of course, you knew Gary Halbert, and I, I think worked with him. That early in his career, he was a a cocky, um, snide guy, and he he I think he wrote a radio ad about you know, overweight people, the elevators go down when they get on them and they're, they're taking up too much space on the earth. And of course it bombed and not sure 
whether it was the the results or somebody smacked him upside the head, but so, something got to me said, no, you, you can't do that, you know? And, and, and there's a big difference between, you know, his just out and out making fun of people with weight problems. And what you're saying is this really happened to this woman. Here's how bad it felt. Here's how it messed up her life and her romantic plans. And here's what she did about it. And we don't, we understand how you feel. We don't want that to continue to be your life. Um, it, it's a fine line because um, I, I almost think, and, and you know, this is the 68 year old guy and me talking that, that young people can't totally get empathy only because you, you have to have been through some really miserable times yourself, some humiliating I, yeah, things. I agree. Do, do you, you yeah. think so? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I know that um, my snarky sense of humor, I was born with it, but it, it took me a while to get um, a little more compassion. Yeah, the more the more love you have as a human being and the more the more you truly want to help people, the better your copy will pull because that's hard to fake. And it, it's just somewhere you want to be as a human being anyway. But uh, really that it brings up something that I think is important, what you talked about. I may write a book on this or at least a long paper. It's tentatively what I call Mike Pavlish's Power of Unspoken Desires. And oh, I'd love, to, I'd love to read the book. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have you back on. Yeah, okay. This has to do with um, research too, and it's an important part of making a direct response sales letter uh, successful. Uh, you know, today, markets that we work in are highly competitive. You need an edge to be successful and using unspoken desires can give you that edge. Uh, unspoken desires, what are they? Well, they're customer benefits and desires that are not found by using traditional market research methods. Yet they're the most powerful motivating reasons that people buy a product or a service. Uh, and you brought up a good example of it. Uh, and I'll get to that in a minute by the experiences that one has as they get older. But unspoken desires are not found by traditional market research because these desires are too embarrassing for a person to admit in public they're not always politically or socially correct. They do not make a person look like a perfect person in other people's eyes. They're not politically or socially correct. Um, they're too embarrassing to admit. They're too personal to reveal. They're, they're unable to even admit to themselves or their unconscious desires that a person may not even be consciously aware of. So by finding and using these unspoken desires in your marketing, you can increase your conversion rate, sales and, and income dramatically. Um, so this will give you a huge competitive advantage, either as an offer owner as a, or as a copywriter compared to 99% or 95% that are only using traditional market research methods. Well, look, I, I don't want to hurt your book sales, but could you give us an example yeah, of one, one yeah, or two of absolutely. these? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me give you a few examples. Let's take a joint pain, since we're talking about that, a joint pain relief supplement, right? Mm -hmm. Here are some examples of some unspoken desires. This is what they're feeling that they're not going to tell in market research. I want to become an expert in pain relief and have other people ask me for advice. So I become the expert and it makes mm -hmm. me feel good. Mm -hmm. I want to not be humiliated anymore in front of friends and family because of the pain grunt sounds I make from mm -hmm. my pain. Mm -hmm. I want to stop being afraid that my kids will throw me into an old age home against my will mm -hmm. because they think I need it for my safety because I fall down. Yeah. I want to be more physically appealing to a certain member of the opposite sex. I want to walk more without pain and finally go on my dream trip to Europe and brag to all my friends and family about it. I want to have increased energy so I can do volunteer work that would soothe my soul. I want to be more popular and make new friends and, because I'd be happier and more social if I wasn't in pain. I want to, and this is a big one. I want to end my secret, secret opiate addiction. I want to end my secret alcohol addiction to, that helps me mask and end my pain. Yeah. You can obviously understand why people don't admit that in public. You of know, course. Honestly. Yeah. It's so embarrassing. And yeah, it's, it's shameful. And yet yeah. millions of people have it. 
if yep. they see that if they see that in a sales letter, that might get them to order. Uh, I want to stop treating my spouse and family so bad and snapping at them and having a short temper because of my pain. I think any of us that have been in pain know it does that. Yep. I want to finally beat my friend in tennis or golf. He's always, you know, te teasing me about it. Yeah. I want to be able to walk so I can lose some weight so I can look good and show my ex, ex what he or she gave up. So revenge, giving back is a big one always. Yeah. So, you know, when you add these unspoken desires, and that's just a quick list, there's a lot more. When you add these unspoken desires to, you know, traditional conventional benefits you get from regular market research, the combination of the two can exponentially increase your response. That, and, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Because they tap into deep seated wants, you know, and they build, they build curiosity, desire, they they give us a fantasy and a better life, a dream life of how things can be better. I promised everyone that this would be a masterclass and you are exceeding my expectations. <laughs> so thank you for that. We're, we're running out of time, but I'd love to have you back. Would, would you come back? And, and I, I know you have a lot more to tell us about, but we're, we're just about out of time for today. Could we do that? Yeah, I have a whole, whole, whole new theory on curiosity and how to use it in, in copywriting that I think will give your readers a huge increase in their conversions and, and a few other big ideas too. Well, that's sort of like a mental Mobius strip because you're talking about curiosity while you're creating curiosity about what you're going to say in the next show. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of what, that's a big part of it, right? <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, Nathan, um, anything for Mike before we wrap for today? Yeah, real quick, if people want to check out more of your work, Mike, is there anywhere that they can go to connect with you or see what you're doing? Yes, uh, I have a website that's my name and then dot com. And uh, uh, there's about 20, 30 samples of sales letters I've written there. They can... Uh, you know, you're welcome to learn from. Nice. All right. I can't wait until you come back and we can continue this conversation for the listeners out there. If you want to catch the second half of this conversation, make sure you're subscribed on your favorite podcast app and catch more episodes over at copywriterspodcast.com. And until next week, we will catch you later. Catch you later. <laughs>